When we looked at our ladder logic security gate, we saw that there was a problem. If the person on the outside sprints through the gate, what happens is that the gate then closes, the button's already down, the horn goes off, but as soon as they get to the other side of the gate, the gate opens back up and the horn goes off. And so the horn only chirps and that's not what we really wanted to do. The solution is to put in a latch. A latch allows you to trigger an event and then leave that event on regardless of whether the, the trigger changes state or not. So in this case, we want the horn to go on if the gate is ever closed, but not to turn off when the gate opens. A latch can be created from a single relay. Let's first look at the wiring for the relay, and then we'll go back and look at the ladder logic diagram. Here we have a relay with a coil. I'm just going to make this a single pull, single throw relay. So when the coil energizes here, this closes. I want to build it so that when the coil energizes, the switch closes, but the switch doesn't reopen. You can do that by wiring the contact, the switch, back into the coil itself. So let me add in a switch. Here's my event. I throw the switch, the coil energizes, current goes like this, and that closes. Once the switch opens though, there's no more current, and so the contact would open back up. The solution is to wire the output of the relay so that it bypasses the event. So the wiring would look like this. The output of the relay is going to be wired here. Let's see what happens when we close the switch. So I throw the switch, this is the event that happens, this closes. Current flows through the coil and this closes. Now when this closes, all that I'm having all that's happening is that I'm connecting this spot to this spot, which really doesn't make any difference because the switch is already closed. However, if I open the switch, now current still flows through because I have a path to ground. The path to ground goes from this point here, up and around to there. And so current can still flow around the, re the coil and make its way to ground. Thus the coil stays on and the switch stays closed. So now the relay is in a self-latching state. I throw the switch. Even now if I open the switch, the fact that the relay is connected to itself keeps the switch closed. The problem, of course, is there's no way to unlatch it. And so with any latch, you also need another switch that unlatches it. So what we'll do is we'll add a switch to unlatch it in this segment right here. So it'll look like that. And this switch, I'm going to make a slight change here, is going to be normally closed. So this is what the latch looks like. It has the switch that activates the event, the relay that's wired to itself, and our switch here, which is in a normally closed position. Again, here's what happens. When the relay closes, we now have a current to a path to ground. The current path to ground enables the switch right here to close. And even when this other switch, the event switch opens, we still have a path to ground. In order to unlatch the relay, then you have to open up the normally closed switch. Here's what it looks like in ladder logic. We have our two rails. We have the output solenoid. It's going to be our latch solenoid. There's some event which triggers the latch. This will correspond to this switch right here. Next, we're going to wire up the latch output. So we need to take care of this one right here. That's going to be a separate switch that's wired like this and then these are wired to the latch. Now the only thing I have included is the normally closed contact which is needed to break the switch but let's see how this works. When this switch closes currents allowed to flow the latch turns on. By the latch turning on it latches it turns this relay on which closes it. Now even if my signal red relay opens there's still path to ground and the latch remains closed. The last thing to do is add in the normally closed switch 
and that goes right in this segment right here. It looks like this. That switch corresponds to that piece right there. And this is the diagram that we'll use for a latch. So the next thing to do is to go back and modify our original light gate controller so that we have a latching system. Here's my original system. I'm going to modify it by replacing the horn with a latch and putting the latch around the gate. So here is the latch sequence that I had before. We have the original trigger, the coil, and the latch itself. When the gate fires, the latch turns on. That turns on the latch signal, which keeps the latch coil energized. In this system, I already had a normally closed switch right here, which allows me to break the latch. Now all I need to do is turn on the horn. Well, I want the horn to turn on whenever the latch is on. So I could wire it like this. If the latch is on, the horn turns on. And this is a latch system. If the user breaks the light gate, the horn will turn on and stay on until someone presses the button.